So I'd hope that one of the directions that the One Health concept will help us to think in in the future is thinking before we make a decision that's going to have an impact on the environment um, about what are the sort of trickle down effects of that decision that we're making on not just human health but also the health of the environment. Early in my career I was an epidemiologist and in many ways in epidemiology you deal with the complaint and the concern the community has as it comes through the door. One week it was pesticides, the next week it was air pollution, maybe it was water contamination the next time. And it's really many times a systems issue and perhaps as you age you realize well this is all hooked together, this is a byproduct of indifference to other people, too much focus on a quick return on an investment. And how do we come up with a way of, you know, yes we need commerce and yes we need wealth because the society functions on it, but how do we do it in a way that doesn't hurt people and doesn't hurt the future? If you're looking for solutions, the solutions are not going to come from one-offs. Uh, and I think that was the original notion of One Health, it said uh, how can you possibly imagine that we have a healthy environment if you only study the health of human beings and you're spoiling the planet for the animals and the plants that live on it. It's, uh, even though you're not wrong in trying to create human health, uh, in the process, if you've broken the other elements that ultimately contribute to human health, then you haven't succeeded. I guess as an ecologist, I'm, I'm pretty well trained to think about things as systems. I mean, I study ecosystems, right? I mean, the word eco has been used in lots of different ways, but it, you know, it comes from the idea that everything affects everything else. And one of the complexities of studying ecology is understanding that you, you may look for correlations between, you know, thing X and thing Y, but you have to acknowledge that every other letter of the alphabet is impacting things X and thing Y. So that idea of, you know, you can't study one thing's impact on another in isolation from all the rest of the interacting factors is something that's interwoven into the fiber of ecology. In listening to other speakers present, you might get an idea, wow, I never knew that about the Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. I wonder why that animal is able to do what it does. And is there a piece of that puzzle that I can unlock into my own research that then could benefit humans, could benefit other animals? Each of these animals, including people, have such uh, remarkable adaptations to allow us to do what we can do. How can we utilize the knowledge from one species and apply it to something else to solve a different problem? We are logical, nominally logical beings. We like to trace things to their root causes. We like to understand things at a fundamental level. And I think it requires a different mindset to recognize that you're not going to solve a problem by understanding just the individual elements, the individual components, and that each of them have knock-on effects on each other, and that uh, to understand the system, you need to understand how they each interact effectively with one another. If you've ever tried to move a network or a cobweb, you realize you can't do it without scrambling the whole thing. The only way you can do it is actually to frame it and to move the frame. And so my goal really here is that we need to frame many aspects of our lives about the quality of human experience and, and the natural world around us and not to treat the natural world with selfishness. For biophilic design there is a tendency conventionally when you're not looking at it from a One Health perspective of considering only people, people's productivity, their cognitive functioning all of these elements and attributes that have to relate to our human experience. But the opportunity is if we start to consider how we can transform human behavior within the built environment related to biophilia in a way that starts to benefit nature and animals and the planet as a whole, then it's not just about people anymore. It's this whole conversation about healing the planet. So I think that's really the potential of thinking in a more systems-based approach. There are lots of linked parts to a system. And 
I'm kind of an optimist about this, a realistic optimist in that intervention at any point in the system, a positive intervention will have ripple effects all over the place. One of the aspects of having a systems uh, approach is to have a vision of how it all needs to come together. So we, I guess we need to accommodate the communications systems as well, to where people know that where we are in time, what's gone wrong, how things can be done differently, and to know that they're being done differently and to see that whether they work or not, and then to make adjustments on the fly.